Um, Galway have had a good year so far in training. Um, three months without a game is going to be a disadvantage to them, but Michael McNamara has trained them extremely hard, I believe. Uh, they have no injury doubts. Uh, they have a lot of changes since last year. They're an unknown force. They would probably have preferred a stronger match, as Michael said, but at the end of the day, I expect they'll be in the All-Ireland semi-final, and there's a lot of counties out there that would like to be in the All-Ireland semi-final this evening. Well, there certainly is, Pete. There's no question at all about that. Now, it's already in the provincial championships. Yeah, both the nice to be here, Jar, getting the second bite of the cherry, and whoever wins today goes into an All-Ireland semi-final. Limerick would be hot favourites to win. Wexford have rejuvenated team with a lot of under-21 fellas, and they'll be looking for a be far better display. Limerick should get there, but Wexford traditionally have a very good record against Limerick. And Jar. Are Derry given any chance whatsoever? The bookies think that Galway are unbackable. Well, I suppose the only hope is that Derry will get the wind in the first half. If they do, I think we could have a game for 40, 45 minutes. But Galway, you know, under big pressure coming in here, they'll be v every player on the Galway team will be anxious to impress the management, the new management team in Galway, and they're going to be all out. If it's a game for 40 minutes, we'll all be very satisfied. But we can only see one result here, and that is an easy Galway win. Okay, gentlemen, we look forward to the action later on. Lots of the papers are saying in Galway and Derry. In the Derry Journal this week, John O'Dwyer believes Croke Park will bring the best out of us. We're going into that game with most people not giving us a prayer of doing well, but that suits us just fine. The Derry manager, Kevin McNaughton, is full of optimism. We're going into this game with nothing to lose. No one gives us a prayer, but I'll tell you, if we can get our act together early on, we're in with a chance. Meanwhile, Galway are just relieved to be getting a game. Galway hurlers in action at last is the headline of the Tuam Herald. Writer Jim Carney comments that manager Noel Lane and his team are short on championship action. While the Munster and Leinster championships were proceeding, Lane had to put his county team away for three months, with his players depending on club hurling to keep themselves occupied and fit. However, even with the lack of action, Jim Carney suggests that this match should be a one-way affair with Galway winning comfortably. Galway versus Derry has little appeal to the rest of the country. Even in Galway, there's virtually no atmosphere or build-up. And that indeed is the scene at Croke Park. As you can see, the teams are out on the pitch, and that's our cue to join our commentary team for that match. So let's go over to Croke Park right now. Thank you very much, uh, Michael, and welcome to Croke Park on a very mild afternoon. And uh, indeed, before you joined us, Galway won the toss and are playing with wind advantage. That's from right to left from the canal end down towards Hill 16. There are six changes to the Galway side that lost the league semi-final last April. Athenry goalkeeper Michael Crimmins returns after club duty to a defence that contains one championship debutant. Derek Hardiman at right half back. Teenager Richie Murray starts with the seniors for the first time at centre field, while Darren Shocknessy also makes his championship debut at corner forward. Making a return as well is wing forward Joe Rabbit and full forward Eugene Clunan. The first of the All Ireland quarter finals underway, and Derry immediately go into the attack. And I can tell you that the Derry side. Uh, are lining out as selected and we're just a little bit uh, earlier than the 2.15 throw in time uh, match referee Barry Kelly just starting a little bit prematurely the Ulster champions uh, have Porrick Kelly who has been showing very good form recently he wins his place at corner back at the expense of Ryan Lynch Derry's best hurler Ollie Collins will wear number nine in an area of the field that will be crucial the half forward line may look familiar footballers Kieran McKeever and Seamus Downey stand beside Gregory Biggs in an attack that seems to depend on the scoring prowess of the inside line of Collins, McGonagall and O'Dwyer. Back to the live action. It's uh, right corner back, Emmett McKeever, clearing his line. First uh, free for Galway within scoring range. This should be an easy opportunity for Galway and Eugene Clooney. Simple tap over the bar by the full forward. First to score in the uh, championship this season for Galway. Derry, they feel that Kieran Stevenson, the Derry goalkeeper, is one of the best in the business. I think he could find uh, his reputation tested here by the Galway forwards. Once again, it's Derry defence and Benny Ward this time. Michael 
initiate a Derry attack. On his back far is Mark Kearns. In towards his brother Alan. Who we've seen a lot, of course, oh in the Sunday God, game in recent uh, weeks, playing with the Galway footballers. Here Stevenson has to come off his line. This is Mark Kearns. Going to Eugene Clonan. A chance of a goal. Clonan strikes twice. In the space of two and a half minutes, Galway break open this Derry defence, and Clunan gets the first goal of the championship for Galway. Well, it's Derry that wanted the good start to uh, Ger Lucknan, who joins me in the commentary box here this afternoon for this game, but so far, it's all Galway. Well, it's all it's predicted so far. Galway's tactic is very, very simple. Bring that half-forward line out to midfield, leave plenty of room in front of the full-forward line. That's what they did there. Ball in. A great goal for Galway. Michael Crimmins gets his first touch. Uses Ollie Canning, who we've seen at the past uh, play a corner forward. Joe Rabbit has the time to steady himself. And the white flag to register Galway's second point. Waves in the breeze. It's a terrible start by Derry. An impressive one by the men from the West. There were serious concerns from a defensive uh, point of view in Derry as a result of their first half performance against Down in the Ulster final when they conceded three goals. But uh, certainly the Derry management felt that they had matters rectified. <coughs> Jeffrey McGonigal misses his first touch. And it's another clearance by Ollie Canning from Portumna. Evan Broderick trying to get Eugene Coonan into the action. Emmett McKeever did well just to get a little touch. This is Richie Murray. Go, go, go. Last year's All-Ireland minor captain. Uses his uh, oh, colleague from the half-back line, Derek Hardiman, also making his debut. Oh, Benny Ward. Comes back towards David Tierney. Evan Broderick. He's been uh, playing very impressively in challenge matches. Back to Richie Murray, who drives it to the left and wide. First wide of the match, actually, for Galway. Well, yes, Martin, big interest in how Richie Murray plays today. He was the minor for the last two years, has been absolutely brilliant for them in the minor. Playing today, a huge game for him at midfield, and very, very interesting for everybody to see how he will do, how he will do and especially how, how he'll cope with matches in the future. Derry will be hoping that Ronan McCluskey and Ollie Collins uh, get a grip at centre field. Here's McCluskey giving the first touch to Michael Collins. Cutting through the middle was his brother Ollie. Still Michael Collins. Good defending by Ollie Canning. Uses Richie Murray. He's back there helping out his defence. Cole McEldowney. Effort blocked out. Slips through them all. Galway in control. Liam Hodgins makes too many steps, and it's going to be a free for Derry. That was the first free of the match for Derry and for Jeffrey McGonigal. Top scorer for Derry. One goal and 14 points in two matches. This is his first in Croke Park this season. Large crowd expected uh, for the remainder of this match, and of course, particularly for the Limerick Wexford clash coming up later on this afternoon. <laughs> Emmett McKeever. Played for a while with the Derry footballers as well. It's a referee spotting the foul, and he's given a free. 
of that late challenge on the dairyman. Alan, Alan, see in and be out in front. See in and be out in front. Ollie Collins. It's this with great power, but unfortunately not matched by accuracy. That's Derry's first wide of the game. Well, Lerona, McCluskey and Ollie Collins are getting a lot of position in the middle of the field. They're doing really well there. The big problem with Derry so far is their striking. They're getting possession, but they're finding it very hard to strike cleanly. They've been easily blocked down, and they need to sharpen up on that. Mark Kearns. David Tierney is available to his left. Well taken by Ronan McCluskey. On towards Seamus Downey. We're well used to seeing, of course, with the Derry footballers as a full forward. He's there with a the black helmet, operating at centre-half forward, wearing number 11. Derry man gets the ball. Down towards Michael Collins, knocked away by Ollie Canning. Here's Kieran McKeever, another man we're more familiar with out the hurley. It's a good strike in towards Jeffrey McGonigal. Knocked away by Michael Healy. Galway clear their lines. Kevin Broderick swinging it in towards Eugene Clunan. He's proving quite a handful already for Conor Murray. And Clunan sends it over the bar. It's a goal and two points after just eight and a half minutes of play from the full forward. No Lane, of course, manager of Galway this season. Was labelled the dream team when. Uh, John Connolly and Mike McNamara, formerly of Clare, joined the management setup in Galway. So big things expected down in the west. Emmett McKeever has been moved into full back on Eugene Clunan. A move that was anticipated. Good overhead strike by Michael Conway. Added to by Gregory Banks. Down towards Jeffrey McGonagall. Two Galway players. It comes to the wire. to the delight of the uh, large number of Derry people who travel to Croke Park. McGonagall, the creator, and O'Dwyer, the finisher. Well, it was a great ball, first of all, from Gregory Biggs. He won it really, really well. It drove it in fast. McGonagall collected it. And then the overlap was coming from Giant O'Dwyer. It was a great chance of a goal, though, Marty. They have to take chances like that. I know it's a point, but it should have been a goal. Corey Kelly. Not a good clearance because uh, unmarked is David Tierney. Give it to him, give it to oh! Alan Kearns cutting inside and very easily scores his first point in this match. Derry certainly look in trouble when the ball comes into the Galway full forward line. Just keep an eye on the way he shortens the grip on the hurling. Make sure he's uh, not hooked. Very good score. And sure, Marty, people watching on the television cannot see the big gap there is between the full full back line and the half and the half forward line. It's a massive gap. Galway half forwards are way out of midfield. It's really crowded, and then there's this big space between the half forward line and the full forward line. And Galway are really exploiting that space. Obviously, the tactic is to get the ball into that full forward line and in front of the uh, trio of Cairns, Clunan, and Shocklesy. Plenty of Galway players available. The man with the white helmet is Darren Shocknessy. The full forward line now have scored one goal and four points. Once again, the marking by the uh, full back line from a Derry viewpoint is a little bit poor, to say the least.
chopped down by Seamus Downey on his opposite number, Mark Kearns. It's, it's a free for Galway. Watch it, watch it. Watch it, watch it. One of several uh, players from the 94 All Ireland minor winning side is Captain Liam Hodgins. That just drops to the wrong side of the goalpost for Galway, second wide of the game. Yeah, but interesting there, Marty. Marty, see who was at full forward. Joe Rabbit was inside full forward, and Eugene Coonan was gone out to the wing. So a lot of switching of positions by Galway here. Probably trying it out today to work, put it into operation later on in the championship. Here and Stevenson opts to send the ball over to the far side this time. That ball is hit too powerfully. Goes well wide. Jeffrey McGonagall is outraged at uh, the quality of the delivery. He wants it in front of him. Off the ball, Eugene Clunan and Emmett McKeever have collided. I'm sure, it's going to happen a few times in this match. Nipping in, Kevin Broderick. Seamus Downing. Unable to uh, deprive Liam Hutchins of winning possession. In towards Darren Shocknessy. Connor Murray now operating a cornerback. It's an easy ball, however, for the Derry goalkeeper, Kieran Stevenson. Here on McKeever, knocks it down for Downey. Coming through, Ollie Collins. Hits it sweetly over the bar. Scorer of eight points in the championship so far. And Lavi club band gets his first year in Crow Park. Very good play here by Downey and Collins. And no messing about, a sweet strike. Dead straight over the bar. Good play again by Corey Kelly. It overdid it in terms of carrying the ball illegally. So it's going to be a free to Galway. Once again, Eugene Clunan will come out to take this. This is his second attempt from the free. It's his first wide. Surprisingly enough, Mar Marty, so far, Mark Kearns and Kevin Broderick have both been very quiet for Galway. Only Joe Rabbit has scored from the half forward line yet. All the other f scores have come from the full forward line. So, a little bit worrying for Galway. I know it's very, very early days yet, and they'll probably open up from now on. But so far, not the most impressive display possible for Galway. Kevin Broderick gets away from Benny Ward. Turns it over towards Eugene Clunan. Alan Kearns will uh, take the responsibility. Corey Kelly allows him cut in goal side, which is always dangerous. Back to Broderick. Great goal. Kevin Broderick comes alive just as Gerlach Van was saying he was at rather quiet. Hey. Just, you can never write off fellas like uh, Kevin Broderick. Great run though from Alan Kearns. Gets inside his man on the big pressure. Lovely pass out to Kevin Broderick into the corner of the net. Broderick has been playing really, really well in training in challenge matches for Galway. And hopefully he has put all these injuries behind him and he's back to his very best this year. Yes, yeah, so I remember seeing him recently in Scarif in a challenge match against Kilkenny, scoring three first half goals. Very much reproducing his form that won him an all-star two years ago. This is a free for Derry. Once again, it's going to be Ollie Collins from Lavi to take the free. Drops this one in to try and find Jeffrey McGonagall. 
Gregory Kennedy. Powerful in his effort to win the ball, but in his anxiety to clear it, took too many steps. So it's going to be a free for Derry, right in front of the goalposts. Jeffrey McGonigal. Happy to take the point. Second of the match. Ronan McCluskey. In trouble as Kevin Broderick nips in, takes the slither and quickly sends it over the bar. Goal and a point in the space of two minutes. Here's the Abbey Denairy man, a goal and a point. That increases Galway's tally to 2 6 now. Biggs, Joe Rabbit is back there. Referee Barry Kelly from the St. Oliver Plunkett's Club in Mullingar asserts his authority quickly. Gonna give a throw ball here. Good play by Emmett McKeever. Eugene Coonan. Working hard. Murray is available in the middle. Sprays it across far as Darren Shocknessy. This is Richie Murray. And that is over the bar. There's his club hurling with St. Thomas's, which is a combination of Peter's Well, Castle Daly, and Kilcreast. The All Ireland minor captain of last year is showing here in Croke Park the reason why he's now a Galway senior. Seamus Downing, pulled on by Gregory Beggs, and pulled on straight over the bar. Five points so far by the clubman from Banagher in County Derry. First time pulling, and straight over the bar, fine point. Confirmation of the scoreboard, Galway 2-7. Derry five points. Holly <laughs> Collins. Kevin Broderick knocking it down. It comes towards Eugene Clunan. Chance of another goal. Stevenson saves and sends it over the bar. The goalkeeper did very well, but to be honest, I'm not too sure he knew too much about it. Let's just watch this again. Eugene Clunan bearing down on Stevenson hit off his chest and the goalkeeper will be happy with the save it's another point however for Galway and that one made again by Kevin Broderick he hooked to Ali Collins out near the middle of the field beautiful ball into Clunan running on there's lovely movement in this Galway forward line now changing positions moving the ball really quickly and looking really dangerous oh, now here, Richie oh, Murray again boosted no doubt by that point a few moments ago up an injury there. There's a bit of a tussle going on behind the action involving uh, former Tiberi star John O'Dwyer and Gregory Kennedy. We continue on with Michael Healy grabbing the ball and winning himself for free. A little surprising that the linesman at the far side didn't inform the referee of what was going on behind the scenes. Play continues on. Eugene Clunan. That is a brilliant point. That is a really classy point that nobody 
could uh, stop. Look at this. This is right along the sideline. Aims at the goalposts and straight over. Fabulous. Well, he's setting out his stall not alone for today, but for the year, I'd say for the year ahead. He's absolutely brilliant today. His walk rate, his movement, his striking, everything. It couldn't be better. And a lot of people claim that he's the second best forward in the country. Well, he's showing just that today. Ollie Collins can't hold on to it. It's Seamus Downey that's down on the ground. David Tierney pulling on it. Richie Murray getting it up towards Alan Kearns. Coonan is available to his right, but uh, Kearns, I think, took the right option. Took his point well. Good work here by Alan Kearns. Good intelligent ball into him as well. His finish was spot on. Ali Collins again, but it's the breaking ball that's uh, depriving Derry of valuable possession. They're unable to reach it. Corey Kelly. Well pulled on again by Ali Collins, but it's an easy pickup. So Rabbit is over there. A little bit scrappy to say the least, but Galway emerge with the slither. Emmett McKeever is claiming that his jersey was being pulled by Eugene Clunan rather than the other way around. Referee disagrees with the Derryman. And you can see the reason why. Free to Galway. Eugene Clunan increases his personal tally to a goal in five points. The Galway people here seem to be enjoying the proceedings. <laughs> Paul Michael Downey, David Tierney, Ollie Collins. That striking that uh, Jer was saying a moment ago seems uh, evident in that little sequence of play. And the advantage swings to Galway. Alan Kearns with Corey Kelly. Referee gives the free to Derry for overcarrying by Alan Kearns. Marty, what will re really encourage Galway supporters, I think, for the future, I think, is the way Galway are playing today. Their method of playing. They're playing low, fast ball into the full forward line. They're creating great space inside. The full forward line have brilliant touch and are getting great scores. So forget about the opposition. There is great hope there for Galway for later on in the year. Michael Conway with the free. Gregory Kennedy. Searching his authority on this game right from the beginning at right corner back. This is John O'Dwyer. Giving it inside towards Gregory Banks. And that's over the bar. Second point of the afternoon for Gregory Banks. Created by John O'Dwyer, who did all the work. Biggs finished it. Alan Kearns, Connor Murray, putting it back out towards centre field yeah, where yeah, David yeah. Tierney wins the race easily. Darren Shocknessy was trying to knock it down and Kieran Stevenson did very well. That's good play by the goalkeeper. Jeffrey McGonigan is coming out around centre half forward now. Ian Hodgins. That's a good clearance in. Long ball in towards Seamus Downey. 
was well beaten by Michael Healy. Derek Hardiman adds to it. Oliver Collins got it. Derry maintained possession. Back to Collins. But given away. Michael Healy again. Control at fullback. David Tierney. Nobody really there, so uh, it's an easy ball for Emmett McKeever. Well kept in by Ronan McCluskey. And won again by Gregory Kennedy. Connor Murray with a valuable interception. Spraying it over towards Seamus Downey. Licks it inside towards Gregory Biggs. Jeffrey McGonigal. Good move by Derry. Good defending by Gregory Kennedy. Jeffrey McGonigal is brought down and picked up an injury. And referee quickly in to ensure that this is going to be a free for Derry. I think even worse for Derry Marty. Seamus Downey seems to me to be injured. He's going over towards the sideline. I wonder if it's, if it's his hamstring. He was limping before he went over, and he would be a really, really big loss to Derry if he had to go off. Looks like Gary Biggs is the player that's going to be introduced for Derry. That's going to be Gary Biggs, who scored four points so far in the championship. And he's actually the man that was taken off in the Ulster final and replaced by Seamus Downey. So Gary Biggs, younger brother Gregory, and he'll play in the half forward line. Come on, big man! Meanwhile, Jeffrey McGonigal has no, recovered from injury. And I'm sure he's going to take this free himself. Oh, that's part of the game. Come on, mate. Down at the opposite end, uh, Emmett McKeever has picked up an injury as well and requires some medical attention. Emmett McKeever from Dungiven. Kevin Lynch's is the uh, hurling club. And played with the Derry footballers as a left half back. In the stand, looking on is uh, Kilkenny manager Brian Cody. Looking at uh, prospective opponents in the remainder of the championship. <laughs> Dr. Paul John McCormick has checked that the cornerback is okay. And it's back to the free for Jeffrey McGonigal. Two points for Jeffrey McGonigal and two frees. This is his third. Really, Jared Derry needed to get a grip at midfield, and particular, particularly with Ronan McCluskey and Ollie Collins, but it's not actually happening. No, it happened in the first 10 minutes since then. They've gone out of the game completely. Galway are totally in charge all over. Now they have brought Jeffrey McGonigal to centre forward, which removes that threat from the full forward line. So they're in dire straits at this stage. Kevin Broderick aims for Eugene Clunan. Lately been held by McKeever. Here's Alan Kearns. Here in Stevenson did well, and the goalkeeper wins himself a free. This is his fifth championship season. Stevenson has on, saved his side on more than one occasion in this opening half. David Tierney, good pull, up towards Darren Shocknessy. Conor Murray right beside him as always, since that initial move in the opening stages. It's going to be a throw ball. Ollie Collins is the Derry number nine. Mark Kearns, the Galway 11. He comes to the Galway eight, David Tierney, making an angle for himself, and off the post... Back down towards Alan Kearns. Darren Shocknessy is coming in. He can't get the cross. The referee gives the defender the benefit of the doubt. Free out to Derry.
Good ball in here by David Tierney. Where Alan Kearns was vigilant after it came back off the post. Corey Kelly stood his ground. Kearns had the chance, but obviously fouled the ball. Joe Rabbit. Two minutes of extra time going to be added on in this first half. Here's Richie Murray going for his second point. This time it's wide of the target. It's right, all right, Marty, but Richie Murray and David Tierney have really come into the game in the last 15, 20 minutes. They're com completely controlling midfield, and Tierney in particular is laying off really great ball for the full forward line. Fast, low ball, even first-time ball off the ground into the full forward line. So very, very encouraging the way those two are playing. Should be noted, of course, that in Derry, only uh, seven clubs playing hurling. So there's a very small base to select from. And their achievements in winning two Ulster titles in a row is commendable, to say the least. It's going to be another throw ball. Emmett McKeever and Pori Kelly, the two uh, cornerbacks. Michael Conway is from Swatra, and he's marking Joe Rabbit now on your screen. Eugene <laughs> Coonan didn't like the challenge from uh, Emmett McKeever. And the referee is uh, calling, I think Eugene Coonan aside. The referee is going to have a word with the full forward. Well, Emmett McKeever has played very well since he was in full back, and Conor Murray has settled much better in the corner than he did at full. Now, the, the best defender by far for, uh, for Derry is Michael Conway, who's marking Joe Rabbit. He's doing a really good job. He looks like a real tenacious player, and he, he's making up for the, the deficiencies he has in his skill by just pure tenacity, and he's, he's holding Joe very, very well. Pitchers uh, are better than a thousand words, and those pitchers tell you what happened between Emmett McKeever and Eugene Clunan. <laughs> Interestingly, Galway haven't scored now since the 24th minute of this first half. Here on McKeever. Coming through the middle, Oliver Collins. Loses possession, however. And it's back down towards Darren Shocknessy. Eugene Clunan. Throw ball as the referee and that's going to be a free out for Derry no doubt about the uh, foul throw so it has to be a free for Derry and be taken by Michael Conway Referee again spotting the yeah, infringement of the rules with that uh, challenge, and it's going to be a free for Galway. It's going to be taken by Cahill Moore. Some doubts about uh, Cahill's availability up to uh, this week. Picked up a shoulder injury in training, but so far in this match has had a quiet day. sent wide registering Galway's fifth wide of this first half well this was Marty towards the end of the first half there's no doubt about who's going to win this game uh, God will be happy enough for their first half performance as you said they haven't scored now in, in, in seven or eight minutes but at the same time they're totally dominant all over the pitch full back line playing excellently Michael Healy Gregory Kennedy attacking the ball very very well totally on top of midfield and uh, maybe they're overdoing this thing and withdrawing that half hour line. There's enough movement from them there, but I'm sure that's something they'll rectify later on. Carl Moore sending it in towards the corner. Darren Shocknessy gets there. Carl Moore chasing after him. Great run by Shocknessy. And great defending by Michael Conway. A dual star, not a hurler and a footballer, but a, a hurler and a hockey player. Won an Irish Cup with uh, Mosley. 
and a little sequence of action brings to an end the first half of this quarter-final. Just seeing the uh, fine defensive skills of Michael Conway here. But no doubt about it, uh, Galway the Masters in the first half with uh, some splendid scores. Galway leading by 2-11. The Derry's. They need a good start to the second half. If they don't, if Galway get a goal or a few scores in the start to the second half, everybody will lose interest in it. So hopefully, uh, Derry will get get a goal or get a few points at least to encourage them at the start of the second half. Well, they are playing with a slight breeze uh, for the next 35 minutes, but it's uh, not a major factor, I have to say. It's a lovely mild afternoon here in Croke Park. Gregory Biggs sending it in towards John of the Wire. But Gregory Kennedy has been dominant at the right corner back. Holly Collins driving this one in. But once again to the wrong side of the post for Derry's third wide of the game. Michael Crimmins is aiming for Kevin Broderick quite fulfill that ambition Derry have possession target was uh, Jeffrey McGonigal Ollie Canning intercepted Gregory Biggs Mike Conway's effort blocked down comes back to Biggs again floating this one in high in towards Jeffrey McGonigal grabs it blocked down referee blows the whistle and I do believe Derry have a semi penalty much to the light of one Derry man. Great catch by big Jeffrey McGonigal. And claiming that he has to have a penalty. Wonderful fielding. And clearly brought down by Michael Healy. And a yellow card for fullback right, Michael Healy, I would imagine, uh, because of that uh, foul on the full forward. Hold in here again. Everything behind it now, Lally. This is a crucial moment. Ollie Collins has to score a goal. Yeah. And he buries it. A much more respectable look at the scoreboard, and it gives Derry a psychological boost at a crucial time. Start of the second half, Collins as it passed Michael Crimmins. Well, Gregory Biggs had a great first half to wing forward. He's gone out now to midfield, and he has the first three balls that have come to him. He has struck them in. For this one, caught, of course, by Jeffrey McGonigal and brilliantly converted uh, by Ollie Collins. A great shot into the top of the net, but all coming from the work of Gregory Biggs out of midfield. He's going to really test Richie Murray now in the second half. Is it possible that Derry can up their performance and test these Galway hurlers. Mark Kearns. Oh, brilliantly won by Emmett McKeever. Down towards Michael Collins. Gary Biggs is over there with Liam Hodgins beside him. Back again to Michael Collins. Looking it inside, but uh, not a very good move, but they have it back again. Cole McEldowney, the captain of Derry. Getting it far as Gregory Biggs. A little bit slow this time as Kevin Broderick came in. Sending it in. A good intelligent ball in front of Darren Shocknessy. Well won by Joe Rabbit, whose jersey is blatantly pulled by Michael Conway. And that's going to be a free for Galway. This is Joe Rabbit. See the jersey pulled there by Michael Conway. So a free. And Clunan surprisingly went for goal. Connor Murray. Good clear. Kevin Broderick can't control it. Kieran McKeever with a fair shoulder. Back towards Carl Moore. Line ball, Galway. Well, I'm sure the waste of the Limerick supporters will be encouraging Derry on, but there with Eugene Clunan, I know everybody says he should go for a pint, but I, every time Eugene Clunan gets a free, you must assume, if you're a back, you must assume that he's going for a goal, because he tries for goals at the most unlikely of times. It didn't work there, the ball is well cleared. Maybe he should have taken the pint to settle Galway down again, but at least we have a contest now. 
Sideline cut by David Tierney. Gregory Bates already has made an impact at uh, centre field. Gregory Kennedy has picked up an injury. Comes down towards Parry Kelly. Richie Murray and his bigs again. Sideline ball this time to Derry. This is the chance to see the goal opportunity for Eugene Clunan, or at least the attempted goal from that free. But the Derry defence were vigilant. This is Gregory Biggs. Good sideline cut, but easily intercepted by Richie Murray. Great catch, Eugene Clunan. Goal and five points in the first half. And it's his first point of the second half. Good intelligent ball again so that Clunan can run onto it. And despite the best attentions uh, of the Derry defender, couldn't prevent the score. Holly Collins and Liam Hodgins. Michael Conway goes back together. through determination, gets a touch to it. Back first, Gary Biggs, Liam Hodgins, spraying this in low. Emmett McKeever. It's an out first, Corey Kelly, from the Schlock Meal Club. And he do. John O'Dwyer tries to keep it in, but there was a push in the back by Gregory Kennedy from Loch Ray. And that's going to be a free for Derry. Jeffrey McGonigal has uh, scored three points from three frees. This one drops in. Michael Healy from Castle Gar. Here's it down towards Richie Murray. David Tierney. It's up the breaking ball. Jeffrey McGonigal unable to hook him. Eugene Clunan. Given a knee up in the back and a push by him at McKeever. Free to Galway. Eugene Clunan takes <laughs> for a goal and seven points now for the full forward. Sideline towards Darren Shocknessy. Emmett McKeever and Eugene Clunan again clash off the ball. And the linesman indicates it's a Derry ball, but uh, the referee is more interested in having a word with Emmett McKeever and perhaps Eugene Clunan as well. The two have been tussling all through the game off the ball and indeed uh, both of them have been earmarked and noted in the book and I think that's a yellow card for both of them so that's a yellow for Eugene Clunan and a yellow for Emmett McKeever uh, well as, as Michael Dynan was saying at half time there's no need for the like of Eugene Clunan to be getting involved in incidents like this he's too valuable a player for Galway all their attacks are directed through him they just can't afford to face in the semi-final without him so he just has to hold back and pull back from these kind of challenges a great block down by Emmett McKeever on Eugene Clunan. But Galway still have possession. Here's Broderick coming through on the overlap. Didn't get it. Fergal Healy does. And Healy sends it over the bar. This is a man that obviously wants to uh, win his place in the starting 15 for what we presume will be a place in the All Ireland semi final. Healy uh, played in 
virtually all the league uh, games, but in the semi-final was a bit of a disappointment. And obviously, was anxious to make up for that performance. John Adewar can't hold on to it. Ali Canning is a little bit of pressure here. Bit of a wild pull there. And the referee again will have to assert his authority, and that was totally unnecessary. And Jeffrey McGonigal and uh, Odewire are all involved in it, but so too is the Galway defenders, and the referee will have to take control here because there was a wild pull here by the Galway defender. Just keep an eye. Ollie Canning was sandwiched, it must be said, but nothing uh, illegally. There was a pull there, as you can see, by Canning that caught John Odewire. Meanwhile, Gregory Biggs puts it over the bar. That's his third point for his county here today. Game has got to be scrappy, Marty. Galway is not as direct as they were in the first half, especially in the first 25 minutes. And they need to just settle down and get back to that kind of play again. Here's Gregory Biggs again, the best player by far, great point. I think that's his third point of the game, besides what he's contributed from play. Corey Kelly. Played well at uh, left cornerback. Liam Hodgins, captain of Galway today. And Kevin Broderick. Playing a rather deep uh, role around midfield. Carl Moore. Connor Murray, rather. Can't uh, get it first time. Gets it the second time. But feeds it out first, Kevin Broderick. This is when Broderick is dangerous. Oh! Brilliant goal. The second goal of the afternoon in Croke Park. This is a thing of beauty. Well, Connor Murray was under pressure. The ball was fed out to Broderick. But what about this for a finish? Well, it was a terrible mistake by Connor Murray. He got the ball, he was tackled heavily, and he laid it off. Now, he thought he was laying it off to his wing back, but who was there only? Kevin Broderick into the far corner of the net. Great finisher. That's two goals for Kevin Broderick. Very, very encouraging for him today. And it's Kevin Broderick again, chasing after this ball. A lovely little bit of scale, fooling Benny Ward. Here in Stevenson. Good play again by the goalkeeper. Might be beaten three times, but uh, no fault on the number one. Mark Kearns fouled blatantly by Cole McEldowney. There's going to be a free for Galway. Just watch this for sheer skill. No goalkeeper could stop it. So Derry are introducing Ryan Lynch for Benny Ward. And uh, Ryan, who uh, played in the Ulster final, a cornerback, introduced as Eugene Clunan sends this over the bar. It's a goal and eight points now for the foot forward. Emmett McKeever makes himself available. The quick puck out. Michael Conway. And hold on to possession. Joe Rabbit. Connor Murray again from Ball on the Screen. Has played well since moved out to uh, right corner back. Michael Conway. Terry builds slowly from the back. Kieran McKeever. It's an easy ball, however, from Hunting, Michael Healy. Hunting. All right, Mike, quick, Mike. Don't be watching us. Ali Collins. Back towards Ryan Lynch. Jeffrey <laughs> McGonigal comes in to challenge. The ball feared. Back it comes to Collins, and that's gone well wide. This is a quarter-final that has lost its sparkle. Galway, obviously, on the road to victory. Well, that, that goal by Kevin Broderick has polished off the game completely. Now, John Adewire is down there injured. We've seen very, very little of John today. They're mainly depending on Jeffrey McGonigal inside the full forward line, depending on Gregory Biggs at midfield. Apart from that, uh, only Michael Conway, wing-back, has played really, really well. The rest of the team, they're way below the standard, and Galway are just cruising their way now into the semi-final. Another uh, substitution for Galway. We're going to introduce 
Damian Hayes. And it looks like Darren Shocknessy is the player that has uh, made way for the uh, number 23 from Fortumna. This is Damian Hayes. Easy ball for Emmett McKeever to collect. Nice stick work by Mark Kearns, but it's a poor pass for Kevin Broderick. He did very well to gather it. Going for his hat trick of goals. Still Broderick. Satisfied with the point. Two goals and two points for Kevin Broderick. He's got four chances in this game, and he's taken all four. Well, it's great to see Marty that he's carrying his training and his challenge match form into Crawl Park. He's playing exceptionally well today. Given that, that Darren O'Shaughnessy, Mark Kearns and even Joe Rabbit are not as good as we'd expect them to be. Galway forward line, depending mostly on Eugene Clunan and Kevin Broderick, but still they're raking up the scores and that's all that matters today. It's Fergal Healy taking on the challenge of Kelly and he gets in goal side of it and Healy is brought down and that's going to be another free for Galway. Here's Fergal Healy, cutting inside and doing what uh, is a nightmare from a corner back perspective, uh, allowing the corner forward to get in on the goal side of him. It's a free for Eugene Clunan, and that's another point. The personal tally is now reaching a goal and nine points from this quarterfinal, as Galway have 317 on the scoreboard. Fine puck out by Kieran Stevenson. Gregory Biggs sends this very high and very wide. Fifth wide of the match for Derry. For what has been a disappointing voyage and uh, performance here to Dublin. Michael Crimmins, holder of three All-Ireland club medals with Adam Rye, takes the puck out. Gregory Kennedy. Donna DeWire got an accidental knock there as Kennedy was clearing his line. And that's going to be a line ball for Derry. Well, I'm sure this... Uh, Fan is wondering how good really are Galway. Not a fair test for them here this afternoon. And possibly this uh, performance here today and uh, this game will highlight the whole uh, structure perhaps, Jerry, and initiate new discussions. Well, regretfully, Derry were a way better last year than they this year. They had a way more fire on them, better method than their play last year. They're very cumbersome, very slow on their striking. They have seem, seem to have no plan of action, no method in their play whatsoever. And it's no test for Galway, it's as simple as that. This is no test for them. And it's a good thing that this is the last year of this system because an all an all Ireland quarter final should be between two teams uh, relatively relatively equal, but uh, you, you can say that, that, that there's a huge gap altogether between the two teams out, out in front of us here. Well, as you can see there a moment ago, Kieran McKeever has picked up a nasty uh, head wound. As we continue on, it looks like Danny McGrellis is coming on for Kieran while he gets uh, medical attention. So McGrellis will act as a blood replacement as Derry go back into the attack. Back to Jeffrey McGonagall. And McGonagall is brought down for the second time. The ball is wide. The referee is satisfied with the uh, decision. Jeffrey is furious. He feels he was brought down after uh, producing yet another wonderful catch. The ball came in from Michael Conway. McGonagall. Well, I think the referee was possibly correct there. Yeah, I think he was right. Both of the, the, the no, no, no one actually swung off him. They just held him out, and Gregory Kennedy crossed in front of him, and the ball went wide. But for Galway, Michael Healy is brilliant attacking the ball, but a tall full forward is able to catch the ball above him. 
Here's Eugene Cunin. Here's the other full forward. That's how to do it. It's that simple, really. Two goals and nine points for Eugene Cloonan. And Galway are having a stroll in the park. Well, that little minute there shows the difference between the two teams. McGonagall catches a great ball at the other end, doesn't finish. Cloonan catches it down here. Ball up to the other side of the field. Cloonan catches it. There's no mistake into the corner of the net. Well, Derry were definitely caught napping here. A wonderful, quick counter-attack. And there's another goal for Galway. They're fourth. Nice. Again, they try and sort out uh, a long ball into Jeffrey McGonigal, but that's gone over the bar. Thanks to that fine strike by Danny McGrellis, who is on for Kieran McKeever. Fine strike from the middle of the pitch. And a good score. This is uh, Eugene Clunan's second goal here. It's finish impeccable. Danny McGrellis. Scoreline looks intimidating from a Derry perspective. Eugene Clunan again. Floating this one in towards Big Joe Rabbit. Rabbit gets inside Michael Conway, who really had little or no option from his viewpoint, only to foul the big man from Athen Rye. And that's going to be another free for Galway. Michael Conway's name was uh, noted earlier, so I wouldn't be surprised if there is a yellow card. There is. And uh, Swatra man becomes another player booked in this game as Eugene Cloonan sends it over the bar. Two goals and ten points now for the full forward. The great thing about Eugene Clune and Marty is besides being a, an excellent finisher, he has also fantastic vision. Great to spot other players lo loose. An example there, standing on the sideline, crosses the ball right across the square where, where, his, where his club mate, uh, Joe, Joe Rabbit, was standing, catches the ball, and he, he had to be fouled. Otherwise, he was in for a goal. But Clunan is the man here today. Everything has been, been directed by him. He, he has scored more than all of Derry has scored together. A really excellent display from him. Just while you were speaking there, there was a substitution. Brian Higgins is on for Cahill Moore. In some uh, people's view, Brian Higgins very unlucky not to make the starting 15. Fine hurler, normally plays at half-back. Here's Ali Collins with Derry. Well done, Hardy, back, Hardy, back. Derek Hardiman sends it out over the sideline at the far side. Line ball again for Derry. Gregory Biggs gone across to take this. Puts it in well. Michael Collins and Gregory Kennedy. He's had a fine game at corner back for Galway. It's very scrappy. Eventually the ball comes out towards Paul McEldowney. David Tierney flicking it in. Galway set up another attack. Damian Hayes making an anger for himself. And he squeezes it to the wrong side of the post. And Hayes will be disappointed. He needs to impress to change that number 23 to at least uh, a number between 10 and 15. Well, he's another one of the star miners from last year, himself and Richie Murray, very, very young player. So obviously the experience will do him really, really good. Uh, he's a very, very promising. He's, he's, he's a bit light like a lot of the other Galway forwards, but, forwards, but very sharp, very fast, and usually a brilliant finisher. So uh, he's getting a bit of experience here today with somebody that will stand him in good state later on. Well, Kieran McKeever has uh, come back on with a different number jersey because, of course, once there's blood on the jersey with the new blood rule, and the jersey has to be changed. So he's wearing 25, but I can assure you it is Kieran McKeever. Derek Hardiman. Well cut out as Derry launch another attack in towards Michael Collins. Galway masters in virtually every part. 
able to play low ball like that in towards Mark Kearns or Eugene Clunan. Emmett McKeever did very well. Gregory Biggs sends it in towards Collins and McGonagall, but Michael Healy is giving a powerful display at full back. Ronan McCluskey, David Tierney working hard. Leaves a run on for Mark Kearns. Tierney has gone into a forward position. And this is David Tierney laying it off to Fergal Healy. And that is another point. <laughs> Fergal Healy's first point since being introduced. It makes that scoreline more and more intimidating from a Derry and Ulster champion point of view. Danny McGrellis is going to be introduced for John O'Dwyer, who has picked up an injury earlier in the game. And uh, McGrellis will come on at corner forward. He normally plays a corner forward, and it's a disappointing day for the man who uh, started off with the Tipperary on the 21s, played with players like Brendan Cummins, Brian O'Mara, and Tommy Dunn before transferring to Derry in 1995. Just less than 10 minutes left now in this quarterfinal. In 10 minutes, Derry will be hoping to put uh, a more respectable look on that scoreboard. McGrellis is unable to get the ball out to a colleague. He fouls the possession, and it's a free to goal win. Galway going to make another substitution. Mark Kearns is going off, and the player that's coming on is Oli Fahey from Gort. An ideal opportunity from Noel Lane, the Galway manager's point of view, and Mike Mack and John Connolly to give uh, at least 20 players a little bit of experience in Croke Park. Fahey immediately into the uh, action. Cole McEldowney, one of several Slotneen players on board this Derry side. Damien Hayes will try again, but this time it goes off for a 65, and that's going to be first of the day. Eugene Clunan has uh, picked up an injury as Derry make another change. Raymond Kennedy is going to be introduced for Ronan McCluskey. And uh, Raymond, who comes from Ball on the Screen, normally plays at centre field. And centre field has been a disappointment from Derry's uh, viewpoint. McCluskey well, and Collins unable. Well, they had a great start to the game. In the first 10 minutes, Ronan McCluskey and Oliver Collins, they controlled everything around the middle of the field. <coughs> then David Tierney came into the game. Richie Murray came into it more and more as the game went on. And by now, both of them are completely dominant in the middle of the field, as, of course, is the, is the Galway half-back line, the Galway half-forward line. Any line you take from Galway, they're completely on top. So now it's a matter of playing out the game, really. At 65, goes straight over the bar. Very good point by Liam Hodgins. Six and a half minutes left in this uh, match. There will be a few minutes, I'm sure, added on because of the various injuries. That's good play by Gregory Biggs. Back towards Paul McEldowney. Another free for Derry. Any further injuries to Derry... Uh, will certainly create a problem for them because they've now used up their full quota of substitutes as uh, Michael Conway takes this free. Places it over the crossbar. First point for the right half back who has worked very hard and performed admirably at right half back 
that scoreline is most disappointing from their perspective. Eugene Clunan has discarded the helmet, which usually means serious business for the opposition. As Derry try and feed Jeffrey McGonigal, tries to get a touch. Michael Crimmins in control. McGonigal chasing. Derek Hardiman clearing. Fortunately, Richie Murray unable to control it and prevent it from uh, going over the sideline. Line ball for Derek. Waterboy got into a little spot of bother there in that uh, exchange. It's Derry that have possession, but once again, David Tierney chasing. Danny McGrellis unable to hold on to it. Derek Hardiman. Ollie Collins. Another one of these high missiles in towards McGonigal and Crimmins is playing with great confidence between the posts for Galway. Always the sort of uh, testing balls that uh, worry most goalkeepers, but Crimmins looks confident. Emmett McKeever on towards Gregory Biggs. Cole McEldowney will float one in again towards big Jeffrey McGonigal. Michael Healy out there trying to win possession back, helped by Ali Canning. Here, McKeever tries to knock it back. This is McKeever again, working tirelessly. Forward bandage, but uh, McKeever loses the tussle for possession. The ball dropping just to the left and wide, an effort by Ryan Lynch. It wouldn't be uh, known for his scoring prowess, more a defender more than anything else. And that's Derry's seventh wide of the match. Three minutes of extra time to be added on by the referee. One of the new up-and-coming referees from County Westmeath, and he's done quite a good job here in Croke Park today. Eugene Clunan feeds it inside, there's a chance here of a goal, he hits off the post! It's still there for Damien Hayes. But Connor Murray manages to uh, help out his goalkeeper. Comes back to Ali Fahey, and that too has gone wide. Anxious moments from uh, Derry defensively as they were once again exposed here, but the woodwork came to their rescue. Damien Hayes unable to get it first time. Eugene Clunan taking on Connor Murray. Here's Clunan. The cross is now required. Comes over towards Damien Hayes. Taken on board by Kevin Broderick. And Kevin Broderick has now contributed two goals and three points to this quarter-final victory. It really is just shooting practice and more like a challenge match at this stage rather than a championship quarter-final. Well, it is. It's, a, it's only, as I said, playing the game out to the very end. Clooney, of course, directing operations right to the very end of the game. Beautiful pass across there to Damien Hayes. Nothing going right from Damien since he came on. He has had three or four chances. It, it just hasn't come for him, but Broderick, one touch from Broderick over the bar, showing how it should be done. Damien Hayes again involved in the action. Only Fahey was coming in, but the challenge by Conor Murray, an illegal one, a pull across the uh, player, and it's going to be another free for Galway. Interesting enough, Marty. Mark Kearns had a good game at centre forward for, for Galway today, unusually for him. But since uh, Ali Fahey has come in, he has worked really, really hard. He's drove, driven in great low ball into the full forward line, was fouled there again. He's re really laying down a marker that he's in form and he'll be putting in a big claim for the place for the next step. Connor Murray obviously picked up uh, an injury in that last uh, sequence of play. He was vice-captain last year, but he was the man who picked up the uh, Liam Harvey Cup. That's the Ulster title. For the first time in 91 years. Uh -huh. 
Satisfactory outing for Mike Mack and Noel Lane as Eugene Clunan raises the white flag for the 11th time. Two goals and 11 points for Eugene Clunan. Which is exactly half of what Galway has scored today. And that just tells you the, the, the importance of this man to Galway. So uh, a lot of good points we taken out from Galway, I suppose, the fact that they did score 422 that the younger players have got experience of the big day, they have got a run out in Croke Park, they have played a championship game, two weeks to go now to the big clash, whether it'll be with Gal with, with, with Kip or Kilkenny, so Galway in, in form, no doubt about that, and will be able to provide huge opposition for whoever meets him in, in two or three weeks' time. Good point by Raymond Kennedy, that's the scoreline now, 422 to 111. David Tierney. Here in Stevenson. Escorts it out over the line. It's a day that Derry people, I'm sure, will want to uh, forget, despite that uh, success that they had in Ulster, which was a remarkable achievement, retaining their Ulster title. But here, Norway just had a little bit too much skill. Jeffrey McGonagall again, third high ball. Grabbed to McGonagall trying to get it into the net. The referee has blown his whistle and he's given a free against big Jeffrey McGonagall. And Jeffrey has thrown the hurley into the back of the net in total disgust. Wonderful catch here again by McGonagall. Tried to burst his way forward, too many steps, and the referee, but judging by that uh, angle, camera angle, would seem to be correct. But I think the sympathy of the fans is the, the reason for the booing against the referee. I think Jeffrey McGonagall has been in great form. He scored six goals and ten points against Swatter in a club championship match recently. It's a record in Derry club hurling. And it's not a, a good day for the Derry inter-county hurlers. Beaten by a far superior side. Michael Conway. Joe Rabbit just flicks it away from him and sends it over the bar. Joe Rabbit's second point of the day. It's been a quiet afternoon for Big Joe. Well, it was a quiet afternoon. He started off with a point in the first 10 minutes. Now he finishes off with a point at the end. But here you see an example of Derry's striking. That control and that striking is just not up to the standard required for all Ireland level. And that's what really has let them down today. They've worked hard, but they just have the skill. They just have that fast, swift movement, good striking that you need at this level. Raymond Kennedy uses Gregory Biggs who continues to pump in these high balls in towards Ali Collins and uh, Jeffrey McGonagall. Gregory Kennedy. Kieran McKeever is deemed to have been fouling. Corner back. Lafre. It's a free to Galway. Liam Hodgins up towards Ali Fahey. Back towards David Tierney. Eugene Clunan, beaten this time by Emmett McKeever, who has uh, stuck to his task. But uh, overall, Clunan's class is there for everybody to admire. It's an easy victory for Galway as they qualify for the All-Ireland Hurling semi-final of 2001. Derry will go home to lick their wounds, but they will certainly rejoice at the fact that they retain their Ulster title and continue to work hard for the wonderful game of hurling. But today, outplayed and outclassed by a far superior Galway side. That's true, against Offaly, but, uh, you know, it didn't work out for them today, and fair jokes to them, they came up, they gave it their all right to the end, and uh, we finished out easy winners, but that's the, way, that's the way it goes. The fact that you had so much of the ball today, it certainly won't be like that the next day. Not at all, I mean, we, we know that. Uh, we had an awful lot of the ball today, and sometimes we didn't make very good use of it. Uh, I thought at times, like our half power line, we've been dragged all over the place, and uh, our full power line might be coming out a little bit too much as well. But we'll go away and we'll learn as much as we can from it, because certainly we'll need to learn an awful lot more for, to make any impression in the semi-final. Thank you very much, Noel. Thank, Thank you. Well done. Expecting Limerick to run.